In today's lesson, I'm excited to introduce you to my own implementation of the STD array data structure, which represents an array of fixed size. This template class takes two parameters, the type of the elements in the array and the size of the array. You may wonder, why bother creating our own implementation? Well, by building our own version, we'll have the opportunity to delve deeper into the concepts of templates in C++ and gain valuable experience in implementing fundamental data structures. Rest assured, our implementation will be fully compatible with the STD array functionality, ensuring seamless integration with existing code. So let's dive in and explore the ins and outs of our custom STD array implementation. To avoid confusion with the STD array, we declare our structure in a separate namespace. In the following code block, we will define type definitions that closely resemble those of the STD array to ensure compatibility with our new container. These type definitions are commonly found in STL containers and are essential for maintaining consistency within the library. The value type refers to the type of elements stored in the array. The size type represents the index or size of the elements in the array. Lastly, the difference type denotes the numerical difference between indices within the array which can be positive or negative. A reference is a traditional way to refer to an element within an array. Likewise, a const reference is used to refer to a constant value, preventing any modifications to the referenced element. Next, we have two type declarations representing pointers that point to the elements within the array. Iterators Reverse iterators for the purpose of iterators, we will utilize standard pointers, as they can serve as random access iterators. And then we have reverse iterators. To facilitate iterating over an array in reverse, we can utilize the convenient std reverse iterator class. This class represents an iterator that traverses the array from the end to the beginning, providing a practical solution for reverse iteration. Within this class, we will include a traditional fixed size array to store our data. To leverage the default constructors, we have designated the data as a public section, eliminating the need for us to define our own constructors. Let's look at the methods. The basic methods are empty, size, and max size. The empty method indicates whether the field is empty or not. In the case of a fixed size array, this method can be declared as constexp and will always return true, as we typically do not desire zero size arrays. The size method returns the size of the array. And max size in this case as well. Next, we have access methods to the elements of the elements in the array. In this context, we have two methods for accessing elements within the array. The first method is the square bracket operator. It functions similarly to a traditional array operator, where you simply specify the index within the square brackets to access the desired array element. The second method is the at method.
There are two versions available a constant version and a non constant version. The constant version returns a reference to a constant element, while the non constant version returns a reference that allows modification of the element within the array. Moving on, we have the add method, and let's examine its implementation. The purpose of the at method is to verify the validity of the provided index. If the index falls out of the array's range, it throws the STD out of range exception. As before, there are both constant and non-constant versions of this method. Additionally, we have the front and back methods, both of which return references to the first and last elements of the array, respectively. Similarly, there are constant and non-constant variants available for these methods. Moving forward, we have the data method, which returns a pointer to the internal field containing the data. Again, the constant non-constant versions here. Let's move on to iterators. To ensure full compatibility with the STD array, we must define iterators for our data structure. This includes both forward iterators, which traverse the collection from the first to the last element, and reverse iterators, which iterate in the opposite direction, going from the last element to the first. These three methods return an iterator pointing to the beginning of the array, representing the first element. As we have defined our iterators as pointers, we can simply return a pointer to the array. These three methods return an iterator pointing to the end of the array, which represents the imaginary element following the last element of the array. This defines a valid end iterator for us, as permitted by the C++ standard. Let's look at those reverse iterators. The reverse iterator begin will return a pointer to the last element. To accomplish this, we will utilize the make reverse iterator function which takes the end iterator as a parameter and converts it into an iterator pointing to the last element of the array. Similarly, the rend iterator functions by returning an iterator pointing to the element preceding the first element of the array. This can be achieved by utilizing the std make reverse iterator method. By passing the initial iterator obtained from the begin method as a parameter to this function, we can mirror the iterator and obtain the correct range for iteration. The film method populates the entire array with the specified value provided as an argument. The swap method exchanges the contents of the array with the elements of another array. However, it's important to note that the arrays must be of the same size for the swap to be performed successfully. Let's look at a usage example. Now, let's dive into a practical usage example to better understand how to utilize this implementation. Data is written to the console. This array is not yet initialized, so we do the next step. Observing the array, we can determine that it consists of six elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, and 0. Let's try to access the first element of the array. The first element has been written perfectly. 
which is correct. Next, we iterate through each element of the array. The resulting elements are displayed on the console, revealing the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0. We can utilize the defined iterators for the start and end of our array, allowing us to write this for loop conveniently. The program has ended. Now, let's examine the unit tests, which play a crucial role in ensuring the completeness and accuracy of our implemented code. Through these tests, we aim to validate the functionality of our implementation by comparing it to the reference implementation provided by STD Array. This comprehensive testing approach allows us to thoroughly assess the correctness and reliability of our code. At the outset of the unit test file, we encounter two crucial validation methods. This tests whether a given range of iterators is the same, whether it contains the same items, or whether it contains the same number of objects. This method compares two arrays to see if they are exactly the same. If the first is empty, the second is also empty. We will verify that they are the same size. That the start and end iterators are equidistant. That these methods return the same elements. And here we will also test iterators. Here we will test the default constructor. A simple initialization test for the square bracket operator initializes the element to zero. So we can trust that this should be the same. This test tests the initialization of an array with five elements. This is again a variant of the previous unit test. We always compare to STD array as a reference implementation. Copy constructor. We will verify that the copy constructor is working, and we will do this by defining an array with a copy constructor, preparing a second array and then testing that the arrays are the same. It is similar with the move constructor. Let's proceed with testing the initialization of the array using an initializer list to ensure its functionality. We will test the assignment operator. We want to test that the equals operator works with our new object, so we declare an array with five elements. And then we assign the new array and check. This is essentially a similar test, only here instead of a copy we perform a move, which means that an value reference is created and the elements are moved.
Now, it is essential to thoroughly test the square bracket operator for its functionality. Again we declare an array with five elements. We test that it is the same. Additionally, we will verify the correct implementation of the front and back methods by conducting tests. We do an array write to the first and fifth element of this array and test if they are okay. Now let's check if the references are implemented correctly. Front and back. It returns references so we can write a value to them. We will write it in 30 at the beginning and 40 at the end. Again, we will test that they are correct. Next, we will test the front and back here again. And finally, we will test the max size. Now we will show you how to run these unit tests. This is how we run them. I have 118 total for our project, and we can see everything coming through so everything should be fine. Thank you for your attention, and see you in the next lesson.